While Airbus Defence and Space is still looking to meet its short-term goal of securing the first export customer for the A400 transport aircraft since Malaysia joined the programme in 2005, its medium and long-term objectives for the airlifter could well be satisfied via an unlikely avenue, the United States. Airbus has its work cut out to achieve its stated goal of securing sales for 300 A400Ms over the next 30 years. And while this is certainly doable, the company may struggle if operators sign up in the relatively small numbers typical for such assets outside of the United States Air Force. If the company is to achieve its ambitious goals for the A400M, then it will probably have to find a buyer with a requirement that, if not for hundreds of aircraft, at least stretches into the high double digits. The only customer that could come close to this, at least in the West, is the US Air Force. Although the service's current fixed-wing transport needs are more than adequately met by its fleet of 428 Lockheed Martin C-130 Hercules, 221 Boeing C-17 Globemaster III's, and 52 Lockheed Martin C-5M Galaxy airlifters, it could face a medium-heavy capability gap as tomorrow's outsized cargo becomes harder to transport by C-130 and as early model C-17s are retired from service. The payload of the latest variant C-130J is 22 tonnes, while the C-17s is 77 tonnes, and the C-5Ms about 130 tonnes. A payload of 37 tonnes puts the A400M squarely between the C-130J and C-17 in terms of lift capacity, which is probably no coincidence. Airbus long ago identified the need to carry the increasingly bulky military hardware that the C-130J cannot, at the same time as being able to carry smaller loads not economical for the C-17. Back in 2009, Lockheed Martin was briefed that its C-130XL program would address issues such as this by widening the aircraft's main cabin to accommodate much of today's outside cargo. This would plug this capability gap and avert the need for the US Air Force to look beyond the Hercules to satisfy its future requirements. At that time, the company admitted it was concerned that the C-130J would be unable to accommodate around 10% of tactical loads within this 2015 to 2020 timeframe. As an adaption of the already proven C-130J, the C-130XL would make economic and operational sense, officials noted because C-130 infrastructure and logistical trains would already be in place. However, Lockheed Martin officials told Jane's at the Dubai Air Show in November 2015 that the company has now abandoned this project entirely, claiming the C-130J's current cabin cross-section is adequate for customer requirements. The US Air Force certainly has a long-term plan for the C-130, commissioning Lockheed Martin to conduct a study into the development of capability enhancements for the transport aircraft across all areas of performance. While the US Air Force has not revealed the types of improvements it is looking for in its latest effort, it would appear from the Dubai disclosure that increasing the aircraft's capacity to carry outsized cargo is not one of them. Although the C-17 could easily plug the C-130's outsized cargo gap, in many cases this would not be economically viable. Also, as the C-17 is such a valuable asset, the US Air Force shies away from using it in austere tactical environments under any but the most pressing of circumstances. This is now especially true given that production is no longer continuing and replacement platforms cannot be acquired. It is also true that, although the A400M can carry only about half the weight the C-17 can, the size of the European airlifter's cargo hold means it can carry 90% of the military equipment used today, the 10% exception being main battle tanks. And while Boeing officials have previously ascribed the term stratical to their C-17, the A400M might well be better suited to that particular tack line given its ability to fly strategic sized loads over strategic distances and to deliver them in a tactical fashion. Though the A400M makes sound operational sense for the US Air Force, a fly in the ointment for any future sale might be the perceived reluctance of the United States to buy military equipment that is not domestically sourced. Airbus will have particular cause for concern over this issue given its experience of the US Air Force's KCX tanker competition and the recent musings of US President Donald Trump on the issue of buying abroad. However, this need not be the showstopper for the A400M that the company might fear, as, although inclined to buy American, the Pentagon has demonstrated on numerous occasions that it is happy to source abroad if there is no better US alternative. This has been demonstrated in past procurements of the British-designed Harrier and Hawk jets, as well as the Airbus Lakota helicopter there is no reason to suggest the A400M might not be picked up too, especially given its ability to fill a niche capability in the US Air Force's transport portfolio. 
While the A400M is never likely to replace either the C-130J or C-17 in the US Air Force inventory, its ability to span the gap between them in a manner that no other available platform can means it is probably only a matter of time before the stars and bars of the US Air Force adorn Europe's heavy airlifter.